um, for bankruptcy protection to go through the bankruptcy process. Now, depending on whether uh, the voluntary filer, the debtor, is an individual or a business, will determine the requirements as to whether they can actually file for bankruptcy or no. So uh, let's start with an individual. Now, <clears throat> For an individual to file for liquidation bankruptcy, uh, the primary requirement that they have to meet is called a means test. And this looks at uh, the state where the debtor is located and looks at the median income. And if uh, the debtor has recurring income greater than the state's median income, then uh, they cannot file for a liquidation of Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Rather, they have to go with a reorganization bankruptcy. Uh, this is used to prevent uh, debtors from defrauding credit by simply racking up a bunch of debts and then seeking a discharge uh, of bankruptcy in Chapter 7 to get rid of the debts. Um, so uh, then we look at the Chapter 13, the reorganization bankruptcy. Uh, so the requirements for this is there are certain dollar amount limits on uh, the debtor uh, as to how, how much secured and unsecured debt they can have and still file for a reorganization. Well, to start with, they have to have um, recurring income. So they have to have some form of uh, employment job or other form of uh, recurring income uh, through, through some other means or method. And then uh, they cannot have unsecured debts in excess of somewhere uh, in excess of uh, $307,675, so just over um, $300,000, and they can't have secured debts of more than $922,975. So if they have uh, more debt, more secured debt or unsecured debt than these $300,000 or, or uh, $922,000 amounts, they can't file for reorganization, so bankruptcy is um, out of the question in this scenario. Uh, now, when it comes to voluntary bankruptcy, there are a number of requirements that have to be met uh, for business uh, bankruptcy. Um, not as much for liquidation as for reorganization, because on the reorganization side, there are requirements about uh, not unduly detrimenting certain classes of creditors, having approval of an affected class of unsecured creditors, all secured creditors being fully paid under the plan, and then just overall the court deeming the plan feasible based upon all circumstances. So uh, there are a number of requirements in that regard. So the next topic becomes uh, involuntary bankruptcy. But involuntary bankruptcies apply uh, in the business context when uh, creditors uh, of the debtor can subject the debtor uh, not under the consent of the debtor, but subject the debtor to the bankruptcy process by filing a petition for Chapter 7 or Chapter 11 bankruptcy uh, with the court. And what the, what the creditors have to come forward with is that either uh, three creditors have to have a combined uh, claim against the debtor for um, $15,325 or more, all right? Uh, and uh, this is a good faith, undisputed debt uh, that's not being paid uh, by the debtor. Okay, or it can be one creditor, not three, has a debt of this fifteen thousand three hundred twenty-five or more, and the uh, debtor has fewer than twelve total creditors. Now, this showing is just uh, required to make certain that uh, a creditor isn't unduly subjecting a debtor to the bankruptcy process um, out of vengeance or spite or when there is just one uh, disputed debt there, but the debtor generally is paying their debts. Now, <clears throat> if the debtor contests this bankruptcy petition, uh, the court will evaluate to see whether the debtor is indeed paying their debts as they come due, or within a reasonable time thereafter, or within 120 days prior to the bankruptcy uh, petition, uh, had a um, a supervisor or a custodian been appointed over the debtor, uh, debtor's uh, estate to execute a lien against the state or to carry out the uh, execution of a lien against the estate. If either one of these are true, uh, then the and the uh, good faith debts exist, then um, the court will subject the debtor to the bankruptcy process. Now, uh, any bad faith claims against the debtor that is uh, just used as abusive tactics against the debtor uh, could be met with uh, 
um, a judgment by the bankruptcy court against uh, the bad faith claimant, with could, which could include fines plus court costs, etc. So by and large, this is the process of voluntary and involuntary bankruptcy filing. We'll talk uh, in greater length about the uh, voluntary filing requirements for a business bankruptcy in uh, subsequent uh, videos.